Okay, in this session we're going to be talking to Kate Hookwell-Smith, who's a wedding portrait and boudoir photographer. Uh, she's going to tell us a little about her style and the way she works, um, and how much control you should take as a wedding photographer. Okay, so Kate, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your photography, and the kind of work that you do. Okay, so I've been a professional photographer now for six years. So I launched a business in 2010. Uh -huh and very much set myself up as a relatively high-end photographer from the start. And in terms of describing my style, I would say definitely on the fine art side uh, with the importance of storytelling. You have a, an art background as well, don't you? I do. I desperately wanted to do fine art as a kind of A-level going into university. I had a very business-minded father who kind of wasn't so keen about me uh -huh. becoming a painter yes. and I ended up reading History of Art at university which I absolutely loved and actually has become very important to what I do now. Yeah, I'm quite jealous of that. Background. No, I loved it. Yeah. And how does that um, translate into your photography now? I think a lot of people who I train and uh, look at my work, they often say, oh, it's very painterly. And certainly I've moved into using light. Once I, understood, once I could see light, and actually work with it properly. Uh, the work I often love is kind of quite moody, the kind of chiaroscuro phase of the kind of Dutch painters, and, and I, I quite like an image to stand alone. So I, I know the importance of storytelling across a whole wedding, but in terms of my favourite images, I just like, I always have one image that stops somebody and you want to keep looking at yeah. it. And um, that's what I want. I want to give my, my clients everything they want from a wedding, but those few big art, wow, stand out shots. You talked about um, beginning to be able to see light. Yes. How did that happen? I think every photographer has a before light to after light <laughs> yes. stage. And in fact, we've trained a course on this because you only know that you see light when you can see it. Mm -hmm. And up to that point, you have no clue that you can't see it. Uh, I think you need to be shown. So for me, I remember specifically the moment that I went to the other side and it changed everything. And in fact, my work became, I'd say, darker, correctly exposed. Yes. And I, I took control finally of the camera. And I think I began to shoot light in a very different way and um, much more creative, much more moody. And I enjoyed it much more. So you've seen the light. Uh -huh. No, truly. Yes. But it, it changes everything. Doesn't everything. It? And it's very exciting. And, and if you haven't got to that stage and you can honestly say to yourself, mm, no, I, I don't think I'm there yet, then go find someone to show you. Yes. Do you think it's because we're so used to being around light and having light in our lives that we don't pay any attention to it? I, I, I always say you can't see the light for the light. Yes. It's too much light. Yeah. And you can't see light. Like in here, you can't see any light because it's, it's everywhere. And, in, and that's what I was shown really is that you need to take take light away mm. and reintroduce it yes. uh, in order to be able to truly see it and in fact you have to see shadows and um, and and really can't be done through a book no it needs to be done live and then suddenly it becomes all suddenly you get what it's all about and then you get the limitations of the camera versus and how different the camera is to the human eye and then you realise that certainly with digital it's about making choices and, and then it's what's your style and then it just becomes actually quite exciting yeah. rather than just snap, 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 you're, you're actually making imagery. Well, I with, try to. You say you, you, you know you can see the light, you can control it. Controlling the light, does that mean for you using flash in your wedding photography and your, your portraiture? It's a good question. So I've just done a talk here at the show um, which was uh, specifically about you, the beauty of natural light for wedding photography and then it said brackets uh, and what I do when there isn't any <laughs> yes. because I shoot weddings all year round and in fact I often have to light weddings more in July than I do in December you just don't know what, what the venues you'll be shooting in and what you're going to be up against and the weather and so absolutely categorically yes I use additional lighting I use flash a lot but I'm the camp, not the strobers camp, I'm the camp of let's try and make this look supernatural yes. um, and actually just improve bad lights. And then there's the stage at which I light people um, specifically uh, for that effect, um, light shots and that kind of thing. Yeah. And it just gives you a greater 
kind of capability of delivering on a wedding day and you and for me it means that whatever is thrown at me I've got stuff in my car to mean I'll be okay if I don't have to use it that's brilliant yes yeah. but if I do I will you've got some stunning photographs on your website and, yeah thank you quite incredible <laughs> and I was wondering um, not everybody has a fairy tale wedding and the bride's father doesn't always come up and give her a kiss right by that perfect window with the, the neck curtains and yeah. the light just bleeding into yes. the frame. Yes. How much do you feel it's important to take control of the situation? And, and some, some photographers say, oh, I'm just going to be invisible yes. and I'll snap away as things happen. Yeah. Um, if that's the case for you, then you, you, come up, you get a lot of miracles in your life. No, yeah, and, and it, in fact, I think recognizing how you, I suppose the end result that you want will dictate how you act at a wedding and how you perform. For me, I realized very quickly that candid or documentary is not for me. And in fact, I actually say so on my website for prospective clients. And I'm like, if you're looking for a documentary for a photographer, then that's not me because I've learned that I have to move people, direct people, make things happen to get the results that make me happy. Yeah. And, and you know, a true candid photographer will not affect anything. And in fact, that would be the wrong thing to do. So it's very down to style. But for me, uh, I find it deeply frustrating if I can't have an impact. Now, obviously on a wedding day, you can't do that all day long and nor should you. But I make it very clear to my clients that when I can, I will. And that, I say to them, that will mean I will move you. I will take a picture off the wall. I, I will ask your dad to walk in that door instead of that door. Yeah. But I'm not going to affect the emotion. And I'm not going to affect the, the, the actual moments. And in fact, they are as important to me as anybody else. Because without the authenticity of it all, it doesn't matter how beautiful the light is, it still doesn't work. Mm. But no, I definitely, um, I definitely have an impact on the end result and, and I'm fine with that it's what makes me happy as a photographer so would it be fair to say you take situations that have, have happened or are happening and then you go oh just hold on why don't you just it's more in it? advance so yeah. so it, I <clears> will <throat> tell the bride where I want her to put a dress on I will um, talk to the dad about um, where he's going to stand when when he sees her and, and I've done all of that, and so when it's actually happening, I am silent. Oh, okay. It's more, it's, it's actually pre-preparation. Yes. It's not, because you, once you understand light, you, you know, you know where they need to be and where you need to be, critically. And, you know, let's say putting a dress on, I will probably want to shoot that in two or three different ways. And maybe two ways I, c I can move and get a complete different image but then suddenly I'll say okay stop guys I'm just going to turn her and I literally just put my hands on the bride's hips and I'll just move her and they'll say okay crack on and I'll come back and again I won't be talking yeah so it, it's not constant but um, I, I'm definitely making the images that I'm, I'm making that I'm working with the light properly yeah. and to me it's all about lights and I actually say to my clients you know I can be a bit boring about it but it is the thing that will make the difference to the images. If, I, mean, you know, I have to be honest, if you look at my portfolio and you like it, you have to understand that doesn't happen by magic. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. does, yeah. And so, so one of the questions you get asked is, you know, how long do you demand your clients give you on their wedding day? And number one, I would never demand anything. I, I have a big chat with them in advance and, I, I, and I, we go through the timings and I, I say, please let me have a look at the timings and explain to you what is possible. So if you've only got an hour and a quarter between the recessional and sitting down for dinner, then something's going to not be done, whether yeah. it's the group shots or, and I just give them options. And then sometimes they change the timings. So ideally, and it's, it's venue dependent, Blenheim, I need an hour because we have to get in golf buggies and we have to go from kind of hot spot to hot spot. But if it's not like that, then half an hour is more than enough. I work very fast. And I guess you've got things set up already and people walk into, because you're planning ahead. And yeah, I know where ahead. I'm going to shoot, but yeah. that happens because of the light on the day. Yes. So, or how I shoot it is light dependent. Mm. So I, I, I don't 
do venue recce, or if I do, I say to the bride and groom, I'll come and see the venue and that'll be lovely, but we will not make any decisions about where we shoot because the light could be completely different. And no doubt will be completely different on, on the, the day. day. Yeah. So on the day I make decisions, which puts a lot of pressure on me on the day, but that's part, part of the job. Yes. The, on your website, um, the pictures are very grand and you've got beautiful locations. And yeah. Weddings don't always take place in those sorts of um, venues. No. Is that the way it works for you? Because you said earlier that you, you've aimed high yeah. from the beginning, so yeah. your clients are probably going to have the, the fantastic venue. Yeah, I'd say probably 80% <coughs> of them, yeah, it's Blenheim or uh, we do weddings abroad, and yes, they are, they are beautiful venues. And then I'd say 20%, we are an enormous part of their budget. And they're not the same backdrops yeah. and, and um, in many ways those weddings have more pressure because the relative importance that they're giving the photography is enormous um, but no I mean I still get to a venue and, and, and worry in the sense that you know it's not beautiful and I still have to deliver incredible imagery um, and that's why you need knowledge because you will be able to do it dependent on your lenses use of light and, and my clients don't want art shots, even if the background is not arty. Yeah. Um, and, you know, most of the time I, I can do it. I just have to work harder. And one of my questions was going to be, you know, are some of the pictures that you produce much better than the actual wedding? Because quite often weddings are chaotic and not people always. are late. And always. The, the earrings haven't arrived or yeah. the bride's mother's drunk or yeah. some disaster happens. But your pictures look very calm and serene. And also, I am very calm, and I think a lot. It's very interesting. A lot of my second shooters come off a wedding and say, "Okay, you're so calm," um, and because there's enough stress and there's enough kind of yeah going on around you, and you don't want to add to that. Yeah. And so I, I am, and I want the memories to be calm memories. And of course, I still get. I love the shots when everyone's busting up laughing and dancing crazily, but. Um, no, to a certain extent, I'm trying to put a sense of calm across a wedding day um, because all that stress is gone after a wedding. However bad a bride feels and nervous, she's not going to feel like that six months later. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and yeah, I just think it's quite important to try and also, I often say to a bride, just stop for a second, let's just roll. And I sometimes gently push everybody away and I'll just stand with her for a minute and say, just, just breathe mm. and just calm them down. And it's a big psychological game, wedding photography. You, if you don't like people, don't do it. Because, <laughs> right. you know, I spend a lot of time reassuring the couple, the bride, the groom, that it's all going well, now I'm getting stuff. And because my cu couples invest quite a lot in their wedding photography, mm. they're worrying if things aren't going to plan, that that's impacting on what me and yeah. yeah, and so a lot of the time I'm reassuring them that despite X, Y, and Z, it's all going well. Even though I might be slightly panicked inside, no. I will never show it. <laughs> and like Brent, who's with me or a second shooter, what I'm saying to them is quite different. But on the outside, I'm very calm. Yeah, brilliant, Kate. That was fantastic. Thank you very much. I think a lot of people will find that very useful. Good and good luck, everybody. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for your time.